the other side in order to see the people who were over there on that other side. And he calls us as his followers to go with him, right? Jesus did not go alone. He took those faithful men and women who were with him uh, over to the other side, and he equips us, right, as his church to continue to mobilize together to go over to the other side to see the people who need the transforming power of Jesus. And so over these last couple weeks, we've been in this series about let us go over to the other side, right? What's that look like to go, to be sent by Jesus, We saw in that first week that we're called to follow Jesus, right? What that looks like for our lives to be fully dedicated to him. That we ought to be prepared, right, as his followers by familiarizing ourselves with the scripture, being intentional about how we pray and share our faith with others. We learn that we can't be afraid of those storms that come up, right? Those distractions that get in our way that try to uh, hold hold back the spreading of the message of Jesus, And Jesus tells us we're called to be seed planters, but Jesus is the one who uses us to cause the growth in others for that to happen. It's all up to Jesus. Last week, we went further and we looked, what does it mean uh, to answer the call to follow Jesus? We learned that we need the courage to step out of the boat, right? To step into the unknown, have faith uh, that Jesus is going to be with us as we go to the other side to share his message with others. We have to be open to that teaching of Jesus, as challenging sometimes as it may be. We need to be open to it. And he takes us along with us to the other side. Uh, Jesus has things he wants to show us, right? We have to keep our eyes open for those opportunities where Jesus can teach us. And we learn that when we answer that call to follow him, we, we have power in the name of Jesus in ourselves to do things for God's kingdom. And that's what we want to look at this week as we wrap up this series on this third Sunday. That Jesus will be sending us to go forth into the world. To actually do the things that he has talked about and the things that he has shown us. Jesus empowered and equipped his disciples to go and do. So if you remember back at the beginning of Mark chapter 4, they were there by the Sea of Galilee and Jesus was preaching that morning uh, sermons to the crowds and to the people. And he was preparing them for what they were about to do to answer that call to go uh, as he was preaching for them to go to the other side. So the first sermon that Jesus preaches uh, was the parable of the sower and the seeds. And then that first parable, Jesus talked about this person who begins to sow seeds and how sometimes people reject that seed as it's sown, as it falls on different types of soil, but also how some soils will accept that seed. And so this is a metaphor Jesus was teaching for spreading our faith with others. As Jesus is preparing his followers Uh, To go to the other side, this is what might happen. This is what it's going to look like. He explained there's three ways that people will reject this message. First, an enemy might take it away as soon as they hear it, right? This enemy will put a stop to the spreading of the gospel uh, as Jesus encounters with the storm, with the person who is demon-possessed, trying to, there's opposition that comes our way. Second, he said there's another group that has no firm root, for for the seeds to take. There's nothing for it to grasp a hold of. And so this means that some of these groups neglect to uh, be held accountable by others. They don't have a support group of faith that they can go to. Uh, Maybe they don't have a church family that can lift them up or they haven't been invited into that. Uh, So their faith doesn't hold up. So it's important, right, to be a part of this community that we call the church. And then lastly, Jesus says the material things of this world will outweigh for them the meaning of the gospel. They get distracted with other things, more caught up in the here and now, concerned about those instead of what Jesus has in store for us. So this sermon has prepared the disciples for what happens when Jesus revisits his hometown of Nazareth here in Matthew 6. As he puts the call into action, uh, they reject it because they're too worried about wondering how in the world could he do all these things. We know Jesus. We know he was a little troublemaker when he was little, right? We know his mom and dad. How in the world could this, this guy be the one who has all this knowledge and all this authoritative teaching? 
And so they didn't listen to the message that he had to say to them that morning. The second sermon that Jesus preaches in Mark 4 is another parable of the seed. And it's a short parable that expands on the first one as it explains how in the good soil, a seed can, uh, can take and it can begin to grow and grow and grow and be transformed. And Jesus is preparing his followers there for when the message of the gospel does stick, when people do hear it and how it can be life transforming. So in Matthew 5, when there was that demon-possessed guy that was coming at them and Jesus cured him, that guy goes and he takes the gospel message and he begins to tell everyone about what Jesus has done for me. This is the experience I've had. Uh, that seed took hold and, and that Jesus had planted and it grew and it grew and grew. He spread it, spread it to 10 different cities as he was living out his faith. So the third sermon that Jesus preaches in Mark 4 is this parable of the mustard seed, right? A familiar parable that we know, uh, but it too is like that second one as it shows how just a small seed that's planted in the right way, right, with the right purpose in mind can cause so much more growth than any one of us, any human agent could ever anticipate. And Jesus is telling them this to prepare them for the great things that were going to come. There may be discouragement, there may be rejection, but when, when, you get it to get, when you get it to work, when you get things to stick, when they understand the message, it's powerful and it's exciting and it's something that you want to you wanna be a part of to change not only their life, but to make an impact on you, right? How exciting is it when you're a part of something that works and when you see people's life change? So in Mark chapter 5, after they've heard these messages of Jesus, the two things that Jesus takes his disciples with him to do is to basically set the captives free, right? Casting out demons, healing those who were sick. And then in chapter 6, it all comes together. So in chapter 4, Jesus had been preparing his followers for what was going to happen, right? Preaching to them, giving them a teaching lecture. In chapter 5, they go with Jesus kind of as those apprentices to learn what Jesus is doing, right? This is what I'm doing. I'm going to show you what to do. And then in chapter 6, he lets them loose. He says, now you are going to be the ones with the authority to do what I have taught you and what I have showed you to do. So go with power. Go with the authority of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And they begin to do those things, right? They begin to go out to cast out demons, to, to heal those who were sick. And they themselves put Jesus' message and Jesus' practice into action as they went over to the other side. So this morning, I want to look at three things that we can learn as we take Jesus with us, as we answer that call and we see the call in action. So the first thing this morning is this. We need to partner with someone else who has the same desire to go to the other side with us. We ought to be partnering with others. So in verse 7 of this passage this morning in Mark 6, we see that Jesus did send his followers out, right? He had been rejected. Uh, they wouldn't listen to him. So he says, all right, well, maybe you'll listen to these other guys who you don't know. Maybe you'll hear them. And so Jesus partnered them up. Uh, you know, don't go at it alone. Let's learn with others what it looks like to transform others with Jesus' message. Because as humans, we need one another, right? We're community beings. That's why church is so important. We need support. We need friendship. We need encouragement in this area. We can go out. We can tell others about Jesus on our own. And we can come together, you know, as a group. Uh, and we can learn about what works, what doesn't work. How we help the poor. How we help those in need. Uh, what, is, what is sticking, what isn't. When I lived in Kentucky growing up there, uh, I had an accountability partner. And uh, I don't know if you've ever had one of those or have heard of one of those. But um, me and this one guy who I went to high school with, this is when I was real young in my faith and still learning what it meant to follow Jesus. I would meet with him uh, each Tuesday or whatever day of the week at a, at a pizza joint in town. And we'd sit down and we'd have lunch together. And we would talk about, you know, how, how's your walk with Jesus going? 
What are you struggling with? What sins are tempting you uh, to, to fall away from this path that God has called you to? And what are some exciting things that are going on in your life where you are making progress? And together we would share those things and together we would begin to grow. And we had other people who were helping us, other mentors. But me and this other guy, we were on the same level. His name was Ryan and uh, he, he was kind of a young believer too. And so we, we would work together and we tried to not do this alone. Right? We needed one another. So sometimes we need those partners that can come alongside of us. And so if you don't have that person in your life, that friend that you can look to to say, uh, hey, you know, I'm seeing something in your life. And we were real honest with each other at times. You know, this may be a hard thing to tell somebody you don't know, but when you build a relationship with someone, you can say, hey, you know, I've seen you telling lies to other people. Or I've seen you doing such and such. You might want to, you know, put your faith in check here. You know, see, uh, sit down with Jesus. Talk about it. What's going on? Uh, so, so as accountability uh, in our lives happens, we can begin to grow uh, as people of God. The second thing this morning is we're called to preach the gospel with the way that we live. And so St. Francis of Assisi was once quoted saying this. He said, preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Right? Let your life speak. Right? Jesus says you know, in, in Mark chapter 5, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works. You didn't preach to them, but they see it in your life. And then they may look to God. They may look to God and see what he's doing in your life. So in essence, our lives are speaking the message of Jesus to others. When I lived in Oklahoma City, when I was going to college, uh, me and Casey were just dating at the time, but we had been attending this little church in Yukon, Oklahoma, kind of a little church plant startup. And uh, we had begun to notice this apartment complex where uh, we knew there was a reputation, kind of some poor people that lived there with drugs and, and different things going on in that community. And we looked around and we saw like seven churches in this area. And we had met a few folks from this place and thought, is anybody from the churches helping you all out or doing anything to minister there? And they said, no, we, we don't know about any of these churches. And so we thought, well, we'll try something. And so we prayed about it. And uh, my friend Daniel, uh, who was my roommate at the time in college, uh, he said, let's just go over there and see what happens. We'll pray about it. We'll meet some people. And we came up with this plan that we would not try to promote a church. We wouldn't even speak the name of Jesus until we felt that these people were comfortable, until we had built a relationship. Right? We wouldn't want to just shove the Bible down their throats and, you know, believe this. We wanted to build relationships. So we went over and we got to know the, the lady that was the apartment manager. And we asked her, you know, what, what can we do to just come over here and help? And at first she thought, well, how much do you want to get paid? Are you guys looking to do, you know, different odd jobs around this place for me? And we're like, no, no, no. We just want to serve and we just want to love on people and help out. We just feel like we're called to do this. And so she gave us the keys to the closet and the maintenance shed. And she said, these, all these doors need a fresh coat of paint. And so God literally opened every door in that apartment complex to us. I mean, it's amazing what prayer can do when we, when we just seek God. And so we went over there and we began to paint doors and we had to leave the doors cracked and dry. And so we got a chance to talk to every single person that lived in this complex. And we got to know a lot of people. We started a Bible study there with one of the young ladies in her apartment. And we had like 10 or 12 people that were showing up. I've got some stories about that that I won't share right now. There were, these people did not know Jesus at the time. There were some, some odd things that took place. But Jesus opened up an opportunity for us to go where Jesus had never been before. We went to the other side. And we didn't speak of Jesus, but we let our lives tell the message of the gospel with the love that we had. And eventually we did start telling people about Jesus and inviting people to church. And so God can do powerful things when we just allow ourselves to be open to seeing what he can do. And so uh, he calls us all to that, right? To sharing the message with others. Whatever that looks like in your life, it doesn't have to be exactly like that. But is there a friend is there a family member? Is there someone that you can begin uh, to open up with, to speak to, and to build that relationship first 
before you just start trying to shove Jesus uh, down their throats. We need to, to love on people, to earn their trust. And then finally, we allow Jesus' power to work through us. We allow Jesus to work through us. There in Mark 6.13, it says that the disciples, they began to be the ones who were casting out demons. They were anointing with oil many sick people, and they were the ones who were bringing healing to them. It wasn't Jesus doing this anymore. Right? Jesus had kind of stepped back. If you notice the, the beginning uh, of some of the Gospels, it talks about, you know, John was baptizing, but Jesus, is, Jesus wasn't baptizing. He was letting his disciples do the work. Uh, Jesus was teaching and showing them what to do. Now, I don't know if I've ever noticed that before until uh, I started thinking about this idea, but Jesus was empowering people. He was delegating this to others so that they would get the experience of what it felt like to transform other people's lives. And so Jesus was allowing them to be conduits of his power. And even in John 14, 12, you know, he says, All that I have done, uh, those who believe in me and allow my power to work through you, you will do even greater things than I have done. And they're like, wait, Jesus, you, you're talking Jesus, the Son of God, right? The Messiah, the one who, who we've been waiting for. We're going to do even greater things than you. How in the world is that possible? Jesus was only one person, right? In his human state. But Jesus equipped 12 other guys to go and do things. They could do 12 times more than just his one, you know, person ability to do. Even though Jesus was God, when he empowers others, right? We're more than 12 people. We can do greater things than they did. If we trust in Jesus, if we work in, uh, with, with going to the other side, we see power in numbers if we unite together, decide that we will follow Jesus. And I want us to start thinking about church. What is our niche here in this community? There are other people doing great ministries out there, doing great things here uh, in this community. What can we begin to do? And I invite you to pray for those things with me, right? What can we do as a church to serve this community, to go to the other side, and Jesus calls us all to go to the other side. So I, I invite us, you know, we, we have church, right, on Sunday mornings. We meet in this building. But I, I'm going to encourage you again, and I'm going to say this a lot. We're the church, right? It's not the building, but we as a people, we're called to be the church. Uh, so I might start asking the question, what are you doing as a person to embody the church in the world? And that's a challenging question even for me, right? I can meet in church. I can lead people as a pastor. But what am I doing to embody the church in my own life? And maybe that's a challenging question for you. But allow the Holy Spirit to work with your heart on that. What are you doing as a person to embody the church and to embody what Jesus has taught you to do? And as a church, what are we doing and what can we begin to do? What, what talents, what gifts do we have? What you know, resources do we have available to share with others? This is what Jesus has called us to. So as we close out this series, let's begin to pray. As we go into Palm Sunday, as we go into Holy Week and Easter, uh, thinking about you know, this is the core of our faith. This is what Jesus has called us to. What part do we play? What part do we play in God's kingdom as the church here in McAllister and beyond. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, you have given us authority. Your word says that you gave your disciples power and you equipped them to go and to be uh, basically little versions of yourself to those on the other side. Lord, help us as Christians be little Christ to others, the embodiment of your church as your people in this world, your ambassadors here on earth. God, what are you calling us to do? Spirit, what are you moving uh, to do for us to do in this place? I know you're moving. I know you're at work here in the, in the hearts and lives of, of this people that we call the church. So, Lord, where is our place? What is our niche? God, help us as we begin to journey with you and seek the guidance and direction of your spirit. 
We ask that you would continue to move in us and move us to not only hear your word, uh, as James says, but to be doers of that word. God, help us to put our faith into practice and help us to love our neighbor as ourselves and to love you and love others. That's what we're called to. God, we do love you. And we ask that you will continue to abide with us as we abide in you. It's in Christ's holy name that we ask these things. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's join together in our response this morning. After we have heard God's word, uh, we're going to join in giving to God with our praising him with our offering this morning. So I'll invite uh, the ushers to come forward and we'll pray over our offering at this time. All right. All right, let us pray. God, we give you thanks for so many things that you have blessed us with. There are things that we don't even realize that your grace goes before us and provides in our lives. Your grace protects us. Your grace opens up doors. And God, you keep us in your good favor. You're always faithful to us, God. I pray that you would help us to be faithful to you this morning. And so, Lord, as we give to you, as we steward what you have called us to, uh, to be with your creation, with this earth that you have given us, with the resources that we have, God, may they be honoring and glorifying to you this morning. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Let us join together in a affirmation of faith this morning. This is from the Korean Methodist Church. So join with me in this. We believe in one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, 
our teacher, example, and redeemer, the Savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins and the life of love and prayer and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. All right, let's sing this morning, Go Make of All Disciples. As that song said, we, we began to see God's kingdom here on earth. Not only is it some place that we go to one day after we die, but the kingdom starts here. The kingdom starts here now. And we're called to go and be who Jesus has called us to. And Jesus empowers us and equips us to be the embodiment of the church in the world. So may we go and be willing to serve in his power in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.